And there we go. Okay. So uh, as I said, this is a part one of a two-part uh, webinar on form migration, upgrading, and archiving. We'll be going over some of the simpler techniques, uh, and some of them will be out-of-the-box techniques in today's section. And we'll go over some of the more complicated techniques and ones that we'll use uh, more of our Cadabra products, QRules, and DBXL next week. I'm going to hand things over to uh, Alyssa for a second to talk about uh, some of our Cadaver software products and customer service options. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, this is Alyssa with Cadaver Software. And before we get started with this webinar, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what um, we have at Cadaver and what we can offer for you guys. So first of all, um, we have our awesome community, infopathdev.com. And I don't know if you guys have checked it out, but if you have not, certainly um, do um, give it a look. It, this is an active forum. You can get free support there. There's um, blog postings, downloads, just lots of great information. It's a great information resource. Next, I just wanted to touch briefly on our more urgent support option, and that is the pay-as-you-go support packs. So basically, you purchase one of the support packs, you give us a call or submit a request online, and we'll get back to you and help you out as soon as we can. We also do consulting work here at QDABRA. Give us a call um, to help with your you know, your latest SharePoint InfoPath project, and we can um, look to get the best solution set up for you. We also have some great tools and templates. Um, we have free trials on our website, so you can take them for a test drive, see how they can work for you, and we do have that 30-day money-back guarantee on all of our products here. So if you're looking to build a lasting, scalable solution, we have great options for web services, and DBXL, our database accelerator web service, we have a free trial for that as well, so you can check that out, download it, and see how that can work for your company. And then lastly, I just wanted to let you guys know about our InfoPath training courses. We actually have an in-person training course coming up here September 10th through the 13th, and that's right outside Seattle, Washington. If you're interested in that, certainly send over an email to um, qdsales at qdabber.com. We can give you more information about that. Otherwise, we do have two online classes coming up this fall. Um, our Beginner to Intermediate course is going to be the 30th of September through October 4th. And our more advanced, our Intermediate to Advanced course is going to be October 21st through the 25th. Certainly check it out on our website or, or let us know if you are interested. And then I will go ahead and hand the mic back over and we can get started. All right. Thanks a lot, Alyssa. So let's jump right into the topic at hand. Uh, why are we interested in migrating, upgrading, and archiving forms in the first place? Uh, so what we'll be talking about is various tips and tricks for uh, migrating forms, what makes for an easy migration or an easy upgrade. Um, also going over some of the techniques that we can use to moving, move data from one location or from one template to a newer template. And then also we'll be talking about uh, ways to archive your forms so you can get easy access to data that you don't necessarily need to modify anymore but you still want to keep around for uh, completion and comprehensive sake. So why are we interested in this in the first place? Well, SharePoint upgrades happen and a lot of times they require site migration. So you may be moving from one server to another, you may be moving from one subsite to another. Um, and you don't necessarily want to build new templates every time you go through that process. Reusing form templates on multiple sites saves maintenance costs. Uh, also, you may have a different environment for testing and a different environment for the production, for the live site. So once you're done with your testing, you don't necessarily want to manually move every single piece of your site from test to production. You want to be able to do that in a more efficient manner. Uh, forms and templates are not static. Sometimes you'll you'll get a directive from your boss to add new fields, to change the ordering of the fields, you may want to rename some fields. Uh, and if you do this, uh, if you make too many changes, the connection between your existing forms and the new template will break and it won't be able to open them. Data reentry is tedious, right? You don't want to take all of the stuff from your old form and manually type it into the new form. That's the way we used to do it in the old way. Why would you be using electronic forms if you had to manually reenter data every time you made a change? 
Uh, and finally, uh, archiving old data is a best practice. You don't necessarily need all these old forms sitting in your libraries or on the shared drives that you use internally at your company, but you might not necessarily want to just delete those old forms and take them completely offline. So let's take a look at migrating templates and forms. Uh, when we're talking about migration, upgrading, our, um, we really need to make sure we differentiate between what we're doing to the template and what we're doing to the actual forms, the XML. So with migrating templates, this requires republishing. Every time you migrate a template, even if it's on the same site to another library, you need to republish it. If you're going to another subsite, another site, another server, you're going to be republishing this. And uh, InfoPath, of course, has this built-in dialogue for publishing. You go through the same process that you normally would to publish a form. At the very end, you'll see this notice that you are moving away from wherever your old site is. If the data sources that your form uses are also moving, then they provide a checkbox to move these data sources. However, this only affects data sources that are on the same server. So if all of your connections, your submit connections, maybe you have some connections to other lists or connections to other various XML files in your form, if those are all located on the same site as the form, then SharePoint will automatically move that over. InfoPath will move that over when you publish it to the new site. However, if you have any external connections from one server to another, from one site to another, those connections will break and you'll have to modify those. Uh, also, if you have dynamic data connections, if you're connecting to a specific list based on information in the form. So whatever is in the form tells you what list or what library you're connecting to to bring in other data or what location you're publishing to, uh, sorry, submitting to as well, those data connections will not change. And in part two, we'll be going into some techniques that we can look at migrating those data connections that InfoPath doesn't automatically change for you when you republish. For migrating the forms themselves, the XML forms, uh, before you do anything, you want to make sure that you're using proper naming practices. You want to make sure your forms are uniquely named, and this will make it much easier to move things from one site to another. You don't want to have any names. So, for example, a lot of people like to name forms with just first name, last name. If you have more than one person with that name, you can run into problems. Uh, you can run into problems even if you're on this just within your current site. If you're moving to a new site, this can cause even more problems. Uh, one easy naming solutions that I use for forms is just to concatenate something that's easily recognizable, like you, can, you could use first name, last name, but you want to add something that will always be unique. And the now function in InfoPath is a, a simple way to capture the date and the time all the way down to the second. And it's very, very unlikely that you'll have two people with the same name submitting the same form at exactly the same time down to the second. So this is just a really nice and easy way to make sure that all your forms are uniquely named. Now, if you're moving the form from one site to another, and this is assuming that the template isn't changing, you've just published the template to a different site, you can use a, uh, you can use a technique called relinking that I'll be able to show. And relinking the forms will simply update the forms and tell them we're now pointing to this new site. Uh, here is where the template is residing now. You will use this template on the new site to open up instead of the one on the old site that you may have completely deleted. Relinking, however, doesn't always work, especially with content types. It doesn't always like the content types. And in that case, we can use uh, a tool that Cadaver has developed called the Modify PI tool. And this is a tool that you can use. Uh, you can batch update an entire library full of XML files um, and point them from the old template on the old site to the new template on the new site. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at some of these demos that I have set up here. Let me pull this up. So this is a uh, simple customer contact form that for some reason is opening on my other monitor. I'll drag that over. And this is the old version of the customer contact form. So what we want to do basically is move these forms over to a new site. And let me go back to my presentation and open up the new site. 
So right now, this, this new site, it has the same template and everything. Uh, all I want to do is move these over and then relink them. So you can do that by going to library. And I'm going to open this with Explorer. And this is SharePoint 2010 that I'm using, by the way. And uh, this will simply open up these files. I'm going to drag them off to just some location that I have here. So I'm just going to drag these to a folder that's on my desktop to download them. So now they've been downloaded. And then I'm going to go over to the new library. And you'll notice this is on a completely different site. I went from um, au.formsboard.com. Uh, I'm now on SHB 2010 Test 2, which one is one of our intranet sites. And let me find the forms that I just downloaded. And uh, I'm going to open up the new site with Explorer. This is a very nice and easy way to, once it opens, to just transfer forms from one site to another. So let me drag these here. And they are now uploaded. And if I refresh, I will see that I now have these forms here. Now, if I open them now, it's going to use the template on the old site, which I don't want it to do because I may eventually delete this library, and then these forms will have no clue how to open. The forms won't open because they won't be able to locate the template. So instead, what I'm going to do is go to the Library tab again, click on All Documents, and then go to Relink Documents. And then I can select the documents I want to relink, or I could simply click Relink All. And what that's going to do is uh, change a particular portion of the XML file to point to this new template. So notice right now this template link is still pointing to the au.formsword.com site for both of these. Once I click Relink All, you'll notice now that it's pointing to the new template. So now when I open up one of these forms, it will be very happy. It's opening. It's found the new template, and it can open up on the new site. Now, as I said before, relinking does not always work. It especially doesn't always work with um, content types. Let me go back to my regular all documents view. So in that case, hold on here. SharePoint is not happy with me. There we go. I'm just going to toss these right now so I can go through the next technique. So in that case, we have a particular tool called Modify InfoPath PI. This is a tool that Kadabra has developed. In this case, we would take the forms that I have downloaded. So I'm going to go ahead and select that folder. Let me go ahead and copy the link. And for the new PI, I'm simply going to go up here and pull the location of the new library that I want. click OK and everything will run. Now these forms should now have the new processing instruction inside it. And let's actually go ahead and examine one of these forms. We'll go ahead and open it up. And I'm going to open it up with a, an XML editor I have. You can just use Notepad if you don't have anything fancy. I like this uh, free editor called JEdit because it color coordinates everything. And uh, XML, as you know, can be pretty dense and difficult to read without colors. So I like the colors. And when you're looking for the processing instruction, if you wanted to do this manually, you would look up here in the header of the XML file. You notice here it has PI version. 
the very next portion is this link, this href equals, and the processing instruction is here. And, oh, I just noticed that I put the wrong processing instruction in here. It should actually be slash form slash template.xsn. So let me go ahead and open up um, my tool again. And let me put in uh, my target, my folder again, the location of the files that I've downloaded. And... I'm going to type in the new processing instruction that will actually tell it where to find the template. I'm glad I caught that. There we go. So this will tell, this will change the processing instruction in the XML file and tell it where to find the new template. All right, so I've gone ahead and done that. So these forms now have the correct processing instruction if I open this back up in JEdit. You should be able to see, and yes, here's the processing instruction. Here it is, and that is the location of the template. Okay, so now if I upload the files that I've just changed, let me find them again. Here we go. So again, I use that Open and Explorer in SharePoint 2010. I'm going to drag these files over here. Okay, and they are now uploaded to my new site. And here they are, and if I click here to open up the form, you will see that the form does indeed open up. So if you ever have problems using the built-in relinking functionality in SharePoint, again, I said if you're using content types, we tend to find more problems there than if you're just using a regular template. Uh, if you don't want to know what a content type is, don't worry, I'll go into that a little later when I show another migrating technique. Uh, so if you have problems with relinking, uh, you can always use the, the tool that we provide, the Modify PI tool, to change that processing instruction on all of the forms that you've downloaded from the old library and then simply upload them to the new library and they will work like magic. Uh, one thing I forgot to say, if you have questions, we'll be taking questions at the very, excuse me, at the very end of the presentation. So that, that demonstrates how you can migrate XML forms from one library to another, from one site to another. Now, what about upgrading templates and forms? Well, for template upgrading, uh, you can either have a completely new template for all forms, including the forms that were filled out and submitted for the older version of the template. That's a little trickier. Um, something that we recommend instead, if this is an appealing option to you, is to instead use side-by-side -side versioning. So what this does is it effectively associates two different templates with the same library, and we can do that using the content types that I've been mentioning, uh, that I mentioned previously. And so you have one form library that contains all your old forms, associated with two templates, the old one and the new one, and then you can configure the library so that any additional new data that's entered will be, will be entered through the new form. So you don't have to worry about people opening up the older version of the template and submitting data using the old version. You want to force people to submit using the new version, but you still want to be able to open all the old forms in there. So for upgrading the forms themselves, uh, again, it's easiest to just not do anything. And if you use side-by-side -side versioning, you don't have to worry about upgrading any of your old forms. All you have to do is upgrade the template and configure the library for side-by-side -side versioning. This is what we recommend because it's much easier and it's much less likely that anything will go wrong. If, however, you have your heart set on having only one template for your library when you upgrade and you want all of the forms, including the old ones, to open up using this new template, uh, you can use XML transforms. Uh, there are a bunch of various techniques you can implement these. Uh, if you're only, if you want to be able to just migrate, or sorry, upgrade one form at a time, you can use promoted properties and a link to the new form. I'll be demoing that today. Uh, there are some more um, advanced techniques using a QRules transform command where you actually design an XML transform. An XML transform is simply an XML file that tells InfoPath how to take one form, one XML file, and transform it into a completely different XML file. 
So it's, it's a translation service in a sense. So we can use the Kubel's transform command to do that. Uh, if you want to batch upgrade an entire library full of XML files, we would use the DBXL migration tool. And in part two of the webinar next week, we'll be showing examples for the Kubel's transform and the DBXL migration. However, today, uh, we will be going through a demo of this side-by-side -side versioning technique that I talked about. And I'll also be showing uh, upgrading an XML form using the, the link and promoted properties method. So let's go ahead and open up my customer contact form. Now, right now, I, I have data in here already. This is entered using uh, the same customer contact form which for some reason is opening up on my other monitor. Let me drag that over. Oops, not cooperating. There we go. This is the, the same customer contact form that you saw for the previous example. Uh, same fields, name, phone, company, description, low status, date, time. Um, so right now, This library is configured. So I, I went into, sorry, I don't know if you saw what I just did. I went to the library tab, went into library settings, and then underneath general settings, if you click on advanced settings, you'll see that this is set up right now just to use a regular template. So what we want to do, we're going to click yes to allow management of content types and then go down here and click OK. And what we're going to do is associate this particular library. Oh, look, it's already set up to do that. We're going to associate this library with two different content types. So from here is a list of all the content types. And to publish a form as a content type, there's a specific setting when you go ahead and publish a form. I won't go through that right now. Um, and you can basically, a content type is simply a template that is globally available for use in any library on your site. So even if you have specific subsites set up underneath your root SharePoint site, if you publish a content type to the, to the root site, it's available. You can use it to open up forms in any library on any of your, on any of your subsites or the root site. So what I have done here, and, I, and I've already added them, let, let me actually go through and unadd these so that you can see what the process uses. Did not like that. What I really should have done is reset this before the demo. Sorry about that. Um, technical difficulties, please stand by. Okay, it's, it's becoming very unhappy when I try to delete the content type. Um, I should have gone back to simply using... Here, let me, let me instead do this. So I'm going to reset this for a second. Okay, so this is what I should have started this demo with. I apologize if this is getting a little confusing. So this is the basic version of the customer contact form. There's only a name and a phone number field here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this out. Uh, description. I know when Patrick demos the customer contact form, he likes to talk about his cat. So we'll put yet another cat which is alive and is a very high priority because Patrick loves his cats. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And uh, let me delete this old document that should not have been there at the beginning of my demo. OK, so let's pretend this is our old library. It only has the one old template in it. This is my old form. Uh, what I want now, I've, so suppose I've made changes to the customer contact form. So I've, I've added a, a company field now, and I've added a date time field to this repeating table. 
So what I want to do is from now on, I want all the customer contact forms to be filled out using that new layout that I just showed you, but I still want to be able to open up the old forms that I have in here. So what we'll do is we'll go to library, library settings, and under advanced settings, we're going to allow management of content types. So I'm going to click yes there. Notice that this grays out this template URL because we will not be using the default template associated with this library. We're instead going to use whatever content types we decide to associate with it. Okay, so now we are set up. Now normally if you wanted to add your content types underneath, notice how there's a section here underneath form library settings that wasn't here before called content types. So you would click add from existing site content types and this contains all of the content types for the entire site. You would click here, find whatever one you wanted, click add and then OK. However, for the purposes of this demo, I've already added the content types that I want. So what I'm going to go down to is change new button order and default content type. So I'm going to uncheck form, which is that old template that got grayed out, and I'm going to select, notice that everything that appears here is available to open up forms in the library that already exist. All I'm doing here is indicating which one of these content types I want new forms to be opened up in. And for that, I only want this new form, this customer contact version 2. So I'm going to leave the other two unchecked because I don't want any new data to be opened up using these other templates. I only want new data to be opened up in the customer contact version 2. Okay, and now we have successfully configured this form library for side-by-side -side versioning. So if I go back here, I can still open up this old form. It has only name and phone number, and you notice there's no date time field over here. However, if I click Add Document, well now I have all of these. And I won't bore you with data entry here. B, C. And I can submit the new form. And as you'll see, we do have both forms side by side in the library. If I click on the old form, it opens with the old template. This form was created with a new template, so it will open up with the new template, and you see the extra fields that are here. So that's side-by-side -side versioning. As I said, that's the easiest way to deal with upgraded templates. Uh, you don't have to worry about migrating any of the forms. All you have to do is configure it to use multiple content types. All right, so if you really do want to have everything open up in one template, you're going to have to focus on a way to migrate data from the old XML, the old forms, to the new ones. So I'm going to go through a, a quick demo of one of the techniques we can use to do that. So this is the old source form. All right, so suppose we, we have this information in here. Um, I'll just go through identifying what these fields are because these will actually be pulled into the new form. So supposing I'm filling out my old form. This is great. I filled it out. What this form contains now is a link, and you can see this link below. This is a link to the new form template with an ID associated with this particular old form. If I click this link, it will open up the new template, open up a blank form in the new template, and import the data from this old form into that new form. Fingers crossed this worked. It did an hour and a half ago. And here we go. As you see, this is the new target form. The fields are different. It pulled in the value for field 1. It pulled in the value for field 2. There apparently is a bug. This should have been the value for field 3 here. Uh, and down here, we simply have some debugging nodes. So this particular technique does use Q rules, which is a product that Cadabra offers. It's an add-on to InfoPath. It gives you much more functionality, including the ability to import data from one XML into an XML associated with a new template. Uh, one of the nice things about Q rules that I'll mention as an aside is that it contains various debugging nodes. 
Uh, so if you're working on doing any complicated transforms or anything like that, with some of the advanced techniques we'll show in part two, um, you can use these particular fields and nodes in sort of a debugging view to get a sense of whether or not your commands are working correctly. So let's take a look quickly at this source form and see exactly what it's doing. There it is. So what's going on here? Well, what we have, if I open my rules, this submit button does two things, right? It has, there's an extra field in this form, this field 4, that's used to store the value for this link that gets clicked. So for the submit button, we're storing this link. And this is a link that's hard-coded to the new template location. As you can see, it's, it's hard-coded to point to this link target. And the ID for the form is contained in field 1. So that's, how it's, that's what it's using to ID this form, so that does have to be unique. And then the other thing that it's doing is simply submitting this form to the old library. So you're submitting the form to the old library, and then this link pops up that will allow you to, on click, import all of the information from the old form into the new form. So this is a technique, of course, you would have to hard code the new, the new, um, the, uh, the URL to the new library directly into this. But you can do this, as you see, without messing with any of the other fields. Fields 1, 2, and 3 here are the ones that actually contain the data that we're interested in importing to the new form. Uh, notice that this technique had nothing to do with changing those fields or anything like that. So the, the data in the old form stays intact using this particular technique. Okay, let's move on to the last topic, archiving forms. Uh, InfoPath Filler has built-in PDF conversion. This is unfortunately not available to browser forms. Um, and where this can be helpful is if you need to archive forms on occasion, or maybe you need to produce printed versions of forms for uh, an audit, if it's only a small subset of the forms that you have. Um, and what you can do with this is uh, design a separate print view and pardon me while I attempt to find the form that I mean to demonstrate this particular technique. Let me just open it up again. There we go. So a good thing about this is you can design, you can use design multiple views in your forms, as some of you may already know. Uh, this will allow you to design a specific print view where you can include only the data you want to archive. Maybe you're, you don't need to archive all of the data that's been captured as the form has been filled out and passed back and forth between different people. You can also design a custom printable layout. So let me drag this over here. So you can design a custom printable layout. So this is, again, the customer contact form that we've all come to know and love. Uh, you see this has some nice images and some formatting. This has been formatted for electronic fill, right? Well, you don't necessarily want to print out all of these images. Uh, if your form has lots of bright colors, they may not look good if you print it out in, uh, in black and white. Uh, for whatever reason, you may want a simpler or a different format for print. So what I've done here is I've designed a separate view that contains exactly the same data. It's just formatted a little more simply. You can add in additional information, additional instructions in this view. And then in the published form, you can go in and open it up and choose to print out only this particular view. So let's go ahead and take a look at that particular demo. It doesn't want to open up my hyperlink. Go ahead and open it up manually. <clears throat> All right, so in this, this particular demo, I've already filled out a form. I've decided that I hate cats. I've moved on to bull weevils. Unfortunately, mine is missing in action. And you'll notice that this form opened up in filler mode because, it, again, the built-in functionality uh, for printing to PDF is only available in filler. I've included some buttons here to, 
for me to switch easily between the print view, this is the main view, and going back to the print view. However, you can also access this on the Home tab. Under Current View, you can switch back and forth between views there. So once I have highlighted, once I've switched to the view that I wish to print out, on the File menu, I can go to Publish as PDF. And I'll go ahead and print this out as a PDF. Uh, I'll just print it to my desktop. You can publish it to a network location, wherever you want. And then this is how the form would look like when I've opened up the PDF. Notice that the buttons that I use to switch back and forth are not appearing, so you can include as many buttons as you want on the actual InfoPath form, and it will not appear on the printed version. So again, this is a useful technique if, say, you, you get audited and you maybe only have to print out a couple of files for the audit, um, but it is tedious if you're doing this for uh, many, many forms. So in order to do that, next week we'll be demoing a PDF batch conversion tool that Cadabra has developed. And this has the ability to convert an entire library of InfoPath forms to an entirely separate library of PDF forms. That's much more useful for archiving. You can then take those forms, you can download them, you can upload them to a shared drive, you can archive them off uh, to disk if you really want to, uh, whatever you want to. But um, and the, the tool also has the ability, if you add new forms and then run it again, it'll only archive the newer forms instead of overwriting all of the forms. So those are all the demos, uh, and that's the completion of part one of the uh, methods for um, migrating, upgrading, and archiving InfoPath forms. I'm going to hand it back over to Alyssa to talk about our webinar kits, and then I'll open up the floor for questions. All right. Well, just before we get started with questions here, I just wanted to talk quick about our webinar kits. Um, if you guys miss a webinar, um, you see a YouTube video of a webinar from the past, and you'd like to get the samples from that, we actually do have those for sale in our web store. Just a $29 um, small processing fee for those. And like I said, you can check those out in the web store. And also, we do have a year subscription for $199. And basically, you'd have access to all the old webinar kits and the new ones that come out each week for a year. So definitely check those out. And remember to submit the feedback today, and you'll get that for free. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot, Alyssa. And thank you, everyone. Uh, I see a couple of questions. Um, the questions are appearing in about half a centimeter of vertical screen space on my computer for some reason. Uh, let me go through the questions as, as I can get to them. Uh, Alyssa, you don't know how to enlarge this space, do you? I'll just I'll just scroll through the questions. Okay, I have a question. Do they have a plus sign on the left or? Um, no. I, underneath the, I, I see I see a trash can which I don't want to click. Uh, that that's okay. I can read them. Um, let me let me see if I can pop open. Oh, okay, I've popped open the question section part, and now I can read them all. Okay, so let's say we have a question from Adam. Do you recommend using the versioning found under form options to update existing forms. Yes, that's another good way um, to, to update forms. So he's talking about the, uh, the versioning that you find underneath. Let me go to File, Form, Options, and Versioning. So this um, here, um, these version numbers will actually automatically update themselves if you have automatically update the template recommended and automatically upgrade existing forms. So and and this will this will automatically update the forms up to a certain point. Um, however, if you make too many changes to your schema, uh, that's where the automatic the automatic updates will break there, Adam. So if for example I deleted I renamed this phone field, if I deleted it, if I changed maybe added a few repeating groups in here, stuff like that. Eventually if you make enough changes 
InfoPath will not be able to automatically tell how to interpret your old forms according to the new schema that you've developed in this field section. And that's when you need to use some of the techniques that I demonstrated. Are any of these techniques good for migrating forms and templates from 2007 to 2010? Yes, um, content types are available in 2007 uh, as well as SharePoint 2010 and uh, 2013 for anyone who's upgraded to that so far. So you can use uh, the the side by side uh, versioning uh, to to move from 2007 to 2010. When publishing to a PDF, this is Tom's question now, when publishing to a PDF, is it possible to publish to a document library without having to upload? Yes. Um, let me see if I can open this up. When I click this Publish as PDF, you'll notice that the default location is actually this uh, my network uh, location here. So if I wanted to, let me widen this, you can actually see the URL. So it's actually pointing to the URL of the library that I'm in. So if you want to, you can publish it directly to the exact same library. Uh, if you have another library or document library set up, you can simply type in that location and it will, publishing, will essentially create the PDF and save it in that particular library. What do I recommend for printing browser forms to PDF? Uh, right now, off the top of my head, Shane, I don't know of any solutions for printing browser forms to PDF. This is something that we're actually looking into. The batch conversion tool that I mentioned to you, uh, right now we're developing it for InfoPath Filler, but we're also looking at options to develop that for browser forms as well. Hopefully, by next Thursday, we'll have an update on you. Uh, and feel free to contact our support hotline at uh, support at cadabra.com. Uh, some of our other developers may know of third-party tools that are available for printing browser forms to PDF. And uh, the last one, oh uh, yeah, Evan suggests is, uh, using Qt PDF Writer. I think I think that will that will work. I'm not sure about what the formatting. Um, I've, I've used Qt PDF before. Um, again, the biggest problem is that, you know, the way you design a form to be filled out electronically is not necessarily the best way to fill out a form um, that has, <coughs> to fill out a form, um, sorry, what am I saying? The best way that to design a form for electronic fill is not necessarily the best orientation and layout to printing out. Uh, that's one reason why even with the batch tool or other tools we would suggest creating a separate print view like the one you see here where you know that things are going to be laid out nicely. Adam says, great presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, and Carl, I think this is, I'm going to make this the last question. I think we're running out of time. Alyssa, let me know uh, how I'm doing on time here. Um, we are migrating to SharePoint 2013 soon. Is there form migration changes compared to using SharePoint 2010? Uh, so all of the techniques that I've shown today work on SharePoint 2013 as well. In fact, I was testing them on our SharePoint 2013 site earlier. Uh, it was just being a little cranky, running a little more slowly than I would have liked. Um, so I, I believe if that's what you're asking with regards to form migration changes, you could use these techniques to migrate from SharePoint 2010 to 2013. You're migrating up. Of course, SharePoint 2013 is backward compatible with SharePoint 2010 forms. Uh, in fact, you'll notice that some of you may be wondering why my InfoPath, uh, my, my InfoPath application looks so strange. That's because this is the newer version of InfoPath as well. Um, so, so yes. You, you should be able to use all of these techniques to on SharePoint migrating from 2010 to 2013. All right, well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, as I've said before, uh, thank you, uh, Amandeep. I know I mispronounced your name. I apologize. Uh, thank you very much, everyone. If you have any further questions, feel free to contact me. And I just realized I didn't tell any of you how to contact me. You can contact me here. You can also contact our support hotline if you have any further questions. And you can always contact uh, Alyssa. And there are other links on our website if you have questions about any of the products, uh, Q Rules or DBXL that we've demoed for you here today. 
All right, thank you. And we'll be sending out a video of this presentation as well as the forms that were demoed uh, later this week. Thank you and hope to see you all uh, at next week's webinar.